So now in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit here. And for some reason, the black is uh, coming out a little light. I don't know why, but this should be black. In any case, we are going to use the LM358. It's a dual op amp I've been using quite a bit. And you can see the pin layout for this. And there's a number of other dual op amps with this pin layout. But just because they're 8 pins does not necessarily mean this is the layout of them. So, in any case, even if they're dual op amp. So, starting from the top left pin number 1, there's either that divot or that divot. I think this particular one only has that divot. But uh, some integrated circuits, they have both or one or the other. So, in any case, pin number 1 is the out pin. Pin number 2 is the inverting input. Pin number three is the non-inverting input, and then we have ground. That's for one of the op amps. And then the second one, the pin layout's the same, except for pin number eight on top is the positive side of the power supply. We can use a single supply of low voltage. We're only gonna deal with five volts. In this video, this can go even down, uh, down even lower. So again, we have out, inverting input, and non-inverting input there. So just because that is the layout there on the integrated circuit does not mean that it will be the same in the schematic diagram. So this particular one, I found a few versions of this and and basically made close to the same thing, but in any case, they've all been, as far as I remember, drawn where the first op amp has the non-inverting on top and the inverting on bottom. That's why I put that polarity in red there. To be aware, whenever you build one of these op amp circuits, make sure you look at the symbol on there. Also, they don't always indicate that you're powering it. And also, usually when you're looking at op amp circuits, you'll see a negative voltage. So I should have put the uh, positive there. But usually there'll be also a negative five volts there. This op amp, we can use a single supply. So that ground symbol there, when I found other diagrams, let me know that they designed the circuit for a single supply op amp. The ones with the negative voltage on there often, you'll see the uh, connections here go to ground. That's virtual ground, or if you have a split sp supply, the ground in between the positive and negative. So in any case, that's enough talking about that. Let's get to the actual build. So the uh, trim pod up here, it's going to go to the non-inverting input of uh, this op amp and the inverting input of that op amp. So let's take care of that right now. We'll zoom in and we're going to take this jumper, go from the uh, trim pot to the non-inverting input right there. And then we're going to take this jumper and so this is the non-inverting input. Straight across is the inverting input for the next op amp because we have out, inverting, non-inverting. So we're going non-inverting to inverting like that. Pretty straightforward. That's third pin down. And uh, just a quick review, you can see that. So we have that jumper from there to there, and then it goes to that other jumper that connects those two spots right there. The uh, non-inverting and the inverting. Now, we're gonna put the capacitor in because again, it's not gonna block anything. In fact, other stuff's gonna block it. So the capacitor goes from the output to the inverting input. And again, the pin layout of the physical component is opposite of what we see there. But here we can still see it. Output there, inverting. So output's top in, inverting is the second pin down right there. So this is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And I haven't done much experimenting with this, but I think if you want to control the speed, you you change the value of uh, these two components. So I saw one diagram like this where all it said was C there and R there. And then other ones where they just had the numbers. So I think that is our two variables for the RC time constant. So we have that done. By the way, with uh, my schematic diagrams, I don't put dots where there's connections. I don't like the way that looks. And uh, some people really love the dots though to know for sure there's a connection there. So I haven't crossed any wires that do not make a connection. If I did, so I've saw other 
diagrams where the line came up and then began over there and are out and our triangle wave was up there. I saw them, they just ended the line and then picked up again. I usually have the line go and then do a curve to indicate that I'm jumping over there. So I don't do the dots. Not many people complain, but once in a while they do. But uh, in any case, I just thought I would mention that quick. So now we have the output, the uh, top pin, pin one there, because that's the first op amp, going to the non-inverting input of the other op amp. That is a 47 kilo ohm resistor, so a top pin there, and that's going to the bottom pin down here because that is the non-inverting. We got output, inverting where that jumper is, non-inverting down there. So hopefully that made sense. Now, we will put in this uh, resistor here, one kilo ohm resistor going from the output of the second op amp to the non-inverting input right there. And we can probably actually see this one, not too bad, while we're zoomed back. So let's uh, just do that. So here you can see we're going to the output. This jumper also goes to the output. And then we're going down to the uh, bottom pin. Actually, that is really far. Let's uh, zoom in. Now you can see the output there. Second pin down on the right to the very bottom pin right there. So that's the output to the non-inverting input. And it, I think it went in. Kind of felt like it was catching. So in any case, there we have that and now we will connect the output to the inverting input and it's getting a bit crowded this is our last component though so that's why I have this jumper to the output there and now we're going to put it to the inverting pin which will be right in between where this resistor is the output so that's the inverting input and we're going to go to that jumper right there and the power is on. I should have turned the power off. It's best to turn the power off before you modify circuits. But in uh, any case, we should be done. This should work. And so I'm going to get my oscilloscope here. And it has, at the end of this cable, alligator clips that I clip to jumpers like that. The black one we're going to put to the negative rail. So that will give us our zero volt reference point. And you're going to notice this should be zero, but I have the speed sped up to a 20 milliseconds per square. And for some reason, it drops down. I'm not sure what that is about for this, this meter. And uh, there we go. You can see the triangle wave right there. So that was our one op amp. And it has the triangle wave. As uh, I indicated on the uh, schematic here, you can see the triangle wave out. For the first op amp so second op amp we expect a uh, square wave and that should be up there i shifted things because i kind of goofed earlier but uh, in any case i might improve that before i post the schematic i plan to post this one there you can see the square wave so actually we have a little improving to do the uh, square wave you may be able to tell the top is a little bit wider than the bottom and this is not zero volts as i said before for some reason it looks like the purple arrow over there became our zero volt reference point and but uh, another thing is one reason why I left the writing on the display it gives us a lot of interesting stuff you can see duty right there so to uh, unless I'm happy with the 62 percent duty maybe I want it high uh, two-thirds of the time who knows but with the uh, trim pot here you can adjust it and go down until it's 50 percent duty and it may kind of waver but uh, there we go. It looks like we're spot on 50. Now, if you go too far, if you go lower, of course, the duty is less. Then it is high for a shorter period of time than it is low. But if you go too far, it flatlines like that. And you go too far the other way, again, it flatlines just like that. So, so uh, really, maybe even a... Uh, couple of fixed resistors might give you 50 percent I'm using a hundred kilo ohm uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor and uh, for some reason I thought this was a hundred kilo ohm when I wrote it on the schematic but it's a 10 kilo ohm and so we could use a 5 kilo ohm and a 5 kilo ohm and that would probably get you 
looks like maybe a little bit more than 50%. So trim pot might be a little nicer, but fixed resistor will work pretty fine too. So you might want to make the more positive one a little bit larger than the negative one. But uh, in any case, this is a new circuit for me. I did make the same basic circuit with a 741 op amp a while ago. And that is a op amp made for a dual supply. So ground having a more positive power supply and a more negative power supply in relationship to it. So you can get current to flow either way really easily. This op amp circuit, as I said before, I wanted to make a triangle wave generator because it's a rarer circuit. You, you make all kinds of square wave generators and stuff when you're learning electronics. You don't make the triangle wave as much. And the what actually makes the triangle wave is this capacitor here charging with a constant current. So if you provide a constant current into a capacitor, it will gain a constant voltage change because it's a certain amount of current per volt and that's over time so current is moving charges over a period of time so you move a certain amount of charges into it for one second if you move that same amount of charge through it for two seconds you would get twice as much voltage as if you moved that much charge for one second and so that's why you see a straight voltage uh, change it's steady because the current through there is steady. The direction that it is flowing is controlled by the output of our square wave generator. So you're taking a square wave, telling it how long to charge, and then how long to discharge, and you have a current source. A certain amount of current's going in or out of the capacitor, depending on how you're looking at it. And hopefully the capacitor is just kind of charging and discharging it may be charging in one direction and then into the other I would have to look at that if it is only going from like 3.5 volts to 0 volts or something back and forth I could use an electrolytic capacitor but I'm not sure if I can or not so that will be more testing for later but in any case hopefully this all made sense and uh, I'll try to post this diagram online I haven't really been doing so uh, lately because I think a lot of people look at the diagram not watch any videos or anything and so I don't post many diagrams if I thought it led to views or patreon donations or clicks if you live in America of my uh, Amazon links then I would post more diagrams but it takes time and whatnot people asking questions and whatnot and also it hasn't been leading to more views so it hasn't been worth it so in any case uh, that's enough rambling on for now. Thanks for watching this long. I will see you in the next video.